Good morning. It is March 7th, 2023, and it is time for another Taco Tuesday session here at Wills. My name is Jeff Bruner. Welcome to Taco Tuesday. Um, we've got a lineup of four uh, great presenters today coming to us from Project Muse, um, Capstone, Infobase, and DocuSeq2. Um, so I like to keep my introduction short, so I'm going to turn things over to Doug Storm, who's going to be talking to us about Project Muse. Uh, Doug, are you ready to go? Sure, Jeff. All right. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. That should allow you to share yours. Okay. All righty. Great. And... Great. Um, hey, everybody. Thanks again uh, for allowing me to join your Taco Tuesday. Uh, again, I'm Doug Storm. I'm with Project Muse. I'm the sales manager for the U.S. and Canada. Uh, today, I'm going to give you a quick overview of the latest news about scholarly resources available on Muse. And of course, we'll have time for questions after the presentation, but you can contact me directly if you have any questions. Uh, first, while many of you subscribe to uh, or purchase content on Muse, others might be asking, what is Project Muse? And briefly, we're an online platform for scholarship in the humanities uh, and social sciences with current content from some 700 scholarly journals and more than 85,000 um, academic books published by more than 250 distinguished university presses, scholarly societies, and related not for profit publishers. The platform offers both uh, great breadth and depth across a wide variety of disciplines, as well as a wealth of cutting edge interdisciplinary scholarship. One of the most important features of Muse is that all of our content is digital rights management free or DRM free with unlimited use and no restrictions on simultaneous usage, downloading or printing. Our platform is responsive and mobile friendly and ensuring the accessibility of our, of our materials is one of our core values. Uh, so let's talk about some of the specific resources available from Muse, starting with our books products. Uh, as all of our books, uh, again, are DRM free, they're ideal for both research and instruction. I'll touch on each of these ways to purchase and access books on Project Muse, open access, annual front list collections, EBA or evidence-based acquisitions, single titles through vendor partners, and our new books custom collections, which includes buying single titles direct from Muse. Of our more than 85,000 books, about 5,000 are open access, freely available to anyone worldwide. Uh, I'll offer a bit more detail about this below in conjunction with OA journal titles. Uh, among the most popular ways to acquire books on Muse are our front list, our annual front list collections. These offer libraries the er earliest access to newly published books from our participating publishers through the advanced purchase of a collection of forthcoming releases for the next calendar year. The collections are offered for a wide variety of subjects, such as history, uh, political science, policy studies, literature, philosophy and religion, and area studies like Native American and Indigenous studies, and Asian and Pacific studies, to name just a few. We also offer a complete collection, which includes every newly released collection book on the platform for the year. A library purchasing these collections gains access to new titles immediately upon their release on the Muse platform. Pricing for these collections is tiered by library type. We also offer evidence-based acquisition or EBA. EBA provides libraries with an option to open up discovery and access for a critical mass of current essential scholarly books, allowing faculty and students to find and make use of the most relevant content for their research and teaching. An EBA program with Muse provides access to a substantial set of books upon agreement to commit a certain amount of purchasing funds upfront, and then allows the library to select titles for permanent acquisition based upon actual usage over the course of the program. 
So there are no triggers to this program. It's it's totally based on the librarian's choice of what content to purchase. Muse has been offering EBA for nearly 10 years, and we have many libraries of all kinds and sizes who choose to renew their programs year after year. More than 72,000 titles are eligible for EBA access, and as of today, this includes nearly 500 2023 titles. A participating library can choose to access everything that is available, or we can tailor a custom access set that is limited by publisher, subject, publication date, or similar criteria to best suit your needs and budget. For libraries that prefer acquiring books on a title by title basis, we work with major vendors to enable purchase of individual books on the Muse platform through their systems, including Gobi, Oasis, and Rialto. And we recently began taking direct orders for single books as well. Finally, I'd like to share information about our newest model for books, Custom Collections, which launched in the fall of 2021. Project Muse Books Custom Collections is a model that offers libraries ultimate flexibility. This model allows you to create your own custom selection from our expansive catalog. You can easily add electronic access for existing print holdings, instantly gain resources to support a new program or major, um, or you can quickly address course needs with a collection tailored to instructor, excuse me, to instructor request. If there was one request I heard time and again, as I've talked with libraries, uh, librarians about buying collections on Muse, it was this, can I just pick and choose titles and still have discounting apply? Well, we listened, and collections may be customized in any number of ways, such as including or excluding specific publishers, selecting a specific subject or set of subjects, limiting to a particular publication date range, selecting books from a specific series, even placing a limit on the maximum price of the books to be included. And if there are specific titles you are seeking to acquire, such as department or instructor requests, we can build a collection book by book. The collection price is based on the prices for each book as set by the publishers, and we offer volume discounting for collections of 25 or more titles. Now we can talk about journals. Our flagship product is our journal collections, which we have been offering for about 25 years, over, excuse me, over 25 years. Libraries may select from among four curated interdisciplinary collections designed for various types of academic and research institutions, or may choose to subscribe to one or both of Muse's discipline-specific collections. All of these collections offer substantial value with access to current content and all available archives back to Volume 1, Issue 1 for nearly 200 of our titles for a significantly discounted annual subscription fee. Thousands of libraries worldwide have relied for decades on Muse Journal Collections to support their institution, institution's research needs in both core and emerging disciplines in the humanities and social sciences, with content from history and literature to pop culture and gender studies. While we carefully curate the titles that go into these collections to moderate their growth and keep them affordable for libraries, we also offer a hosting service for other titles interested in being on our platform. This journal hosting program recently experienced a rapid expansion, so I'd like to share a bit more about it. Our hosting service provides options for publishers to place journals on the Muse platform outside of our collections, but still fully integrated for search and discovery with the rest of our journal and book content. Muse is pleased to offer a sustainable, stable solution for these journals on a platform whose mission aligns with that of the publishers. We have over 80 journals in the hosting program on Muse available for individual title subscriptions. But I should note that overall, more than 400 journals are available for individual subscriptions on the Muse platform, with many journals in our collections also offering single institutional subscriptions on Muse. You can add single titles to supplement your subscription to a collection or select individual titles to meet specialized needs. A further benefit of the expanded journals hosting program is the ability for Muse to provide home to provide a home for fully open access journal titles. We currently host 13 fully OA journals and anticipate supporting many more in the future. 
With the rapid growth of the hosting program, there are now many journals on Muse that are not included in the premium collection or any other collection we offer. To help libraries interested in getting it all on Muse, we introduce the Premium Plus package, a discounted bundle consisting solely of journals in the hosting program on Muse. When combined with a Muse Premium Collection subscription, the Premium Plus package provides a library with access to all the subscription journals from a long list of university presses and two prestigious scholarly societies. Libraries that subscribe to both the Muse Premium Collection and the Premium Plus package add-on have access to current content plus all available back files for all but a handful of the journals on the Muse platform. Libraries can add a subscription to the Premium Plus package through the same channels from which they order their collections, including, of course, our consortium partners. I do also want to stress there is no prerequisite to purchasing the package. You don't need to be a premium subscriber or standard or basic, etc., in order to benefit from this convenient bundling of the Plus titles. For 2023, the package includes nearly all of the hosted titles, and the package price is a modest discount from the sum of subscription fees for all the included titles. And lastly, I briefly mentioned our wealth of fully open access content, both books and journals, and I'd like to quickly highlight this web page featuring our OA resources. To browse all open access content on Project Muse, go to the homepage muse.jhu.edu, find the What's on Muse link at the top of the page, and from there you'll see the link to the page for open access, open access on Muse, where you can browse all available OA content. Also available here are free MARC records and KBART files for OA materials on Muse. We share metadata for our OA content with all the major discovery services so that you can make these materials easily visible to your users. And that's it for me. Uh, if you have time, obviously we have some time, so I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you so much, Doug. Um, we, uh, I, I don't see any questions having come in, but um, I will, uh, of course, reiterate to anyone uh, listening or uh, watching live or watching the recording that you can always reach out to uh, Wills for information and uh, Doug, I saw that he had his uh, contact information up on the screen as well. So we're always happy to relay any questions on to you. Um, and uh, thank you so much, Doug, for uh, joining us today. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring up the little agenda screen again just to get us uh, reset for our next <clears throat> uh, presenter. So um, I think coming to us today, excuse me, from uh, Capstone or representing Capstone, we've got Marty. Marty, uh, are you ready to go? Uh, yes, thank you, Jeff. We appreciate it. No problem. I'm going to stop sharing my screen so that you can take, take the wheel. Sounds good. Thank you, Wills, and uh, thank you, Wills members. We appreciate you the, taking the time to join us today. Uh, I'm Marty Dombacon. I'm the uh, representative for um, Capstone Pebble Go for Wisconsin. So we work with the entire state of Wisconsin. Uh, and thank you uh, to um, Will's members who are existing Pebble Go subscribers. Uh, um, there's a lot of users across our state. So we really appreciate your support and your, uh, your subscriptions. And uh, as you're probably aware, the uh, Platform just keeps getting better and better. Uh, Capstone's been working hard, adding functions, adding content, all sorts of new things to keep it very current and uh, to really help you maximize the value of your, your investment with Capstone and PebbleGo, which we appreciate. Uh, I'll just take a few minutes today just to give you an update on uh, some of the new functions, some of the new content, and some of the new options. And uh, anything you see that is of interest, if you'd like to know more, um, to take a closer look, uh, you can contact Wills or contact us at Capstone and we'll be happy to help you out. Uh, so this should look very familiar to those who are uh, working with Pebble Go. Um, we are a very widely used elementary library resource across the state of Wisconsin. Um, this is coming from Capstone Publishers, uh, the producer of the content. Um, and we really have a fantastic uh, elementary curriculum content hub that we've really expanded over time. 
um, the new layout might look a little bit uh, more streamlined and that's on purpose. We've taken a couple of different places, Pebble Go, Pebble Go Next, and the Capstone Interactive eBooks, and now we've put them all onto one platform. So it's very easy for students and staff to access all of the content all in one hub. So this is really a very strong development that they've done uh, for the uh, platform just to make it a lot easier to use. And uh, so more students will know where to go and where to find all of their Pebble Go research. Uh, so some of the features that you're familiar with, uh, the very easy to use search box uh, with the guided keyword searching, uh, very large uh, visual, and um, it's the, the information is uh, recognized and uh, easily found. Um, all of the capstone entries have professional audio read aloud. These are professional actors who've read all of the capstone resources, whether that be Pebble Go or eBooks, anything that comes from capstone is all on here professionally done. There's no robotic text to speech to be found. Everything is natural fluency from professional readers and the extended learning features uh, for chances for the students to have uh, extensions of their learning um, with video clips, uh, audio, and a lot of other things where they can cite their sources and really give the young researchers those beginning research skills and then gives them, give them some great content to develop those skills as they become older. And a lot of share what you know, uh, printable templates so they can uh, work um, on uh, off off the, uh, off the platform later with more extension of their learning. A major portion of the Pebble Go uh, programming that they've done the last couple of years has really uh, expanded the accessibility. Uh, we really want to have all of our content accessible for all of your learners, all abilities, high, medium, low, struggling, you know, any, anywhere in between, we've got some really nice uh, accessible technology that really delivers the content in a very uh, easy to use way, ways for your students of all learning abilities. Um, we've also expanded the um, access. So now you can use it remotely at home, anywhere you have an internet connection, any device. It's really device neutral. So there's no um, extra login needed at all if the student is already in Pebble Go from their school, which will have that that URL that will connect in with Capstone directly. Students can use that Pebble Go anywhere they are. So it's really a very mobile and very flexible um, usage now. The professional read aloud mentioned earlier and a number of administrative tools to uh, see your usage and uh, really find out you know, what your students are interested in and then you know, work on um, planning around that and then connecting it in with your Google Classroom or learning, learning management system, whatever you're using in your, in your schools, you have those opportunities to link in. And I'll tell you about the, uh, there's two major new spotlight features I'll be covering very shortly. And um, we'll tell you more about some of the free resources that are available to all of your educators um, at the end. So many of you are familiar with the Pebble Go original bronze package. Now this is the five modules of animals, science, biographies, social studies, and health was the most recent one to be added. Uh, some of you may have a few of these modules. Um, this would be a great time to consider upgrading to the bronze because you're gonna get all five. Um, this is something that uh, really has been expanded over time. So anything that you have, just gets more and more updated and new articles entered throughout the year. So your existing subscription just keeps growing even if your uh, renewal is the same. So we've got some really nice added value that comes along with your subscription. Um, to put a few numbers on that, during this past year, uh, there were four major edition launches that, pe that Pebble Go uh, enjoyed, and a lot of them went into Pebble Go Next, which would be that um, upper intermediate to even to middle school area where you've got a lot of great content that's a little bit higher reading level now that really partners well with the original Pebble Go. So as students 
um, become older and they're familiar with the PebbleGo platform, now they've got a chance to dive into the PebbleGo Next if you subscribe to that. So if you have the bronze, you have all of the original PebbleGo. And if you go with one of the larger modules uh, to add PebbleGo Next or uh, Spanish, then you would have expansion and you could get everything that comes from Capstone. If you have the gold or what was the platinum last year is now the gold, uh, and you want to continue with that, that's fantastic. You get everything. So all of the content that's available from Capstone, you get it all. So you might want to uh, take a look at some of those expansion possibilities. Uh, Pebble Go Next is our major emphasis at this time for new content. The grades three, five, and a number of Wisconsin middle schools also have that for students who are reading below level, who uh, will have great value um, with the accessibility of the content and its curriculum aligned content and all of the major themes and the, the areas of the curriculum. So we have the biographies, new health for 3.5 coming out in fall. So that'll be something really exciting to watch for. If you subscribe to Pebble Go Next, you'll automatically get that. So that would be a very uh, compelling reason to take a look at next if you just have the original Pebble Go and would like to expand your content upwards. These are some really nice ways to go at an economical uh, upgrade price and Wills can help you with a, with a nice customized quote for your district. Um, indigenous people's history, science, social studies, and the states. So now we have a lower level states and a higher level states. So if you're looking for differentiated learning opportunities there, you've got multiple levels of text on similar topics and they all really have a strong connection to the Wisconsin state standards. So we've got some really good stuff there with Next. If you're working with um, bilingual or uh, Spanish language, um, all of the original Pebble Go um, bronze have Spanish equivalents. Um, we have all professional read alouds, just like with the English um, version. It's also for Spanish. And you've got a quick, easy toggle between two languages. So if you're doing dual language uh, instruction, this is a fantastic resource. Um, and this is, a, this is also something they, um, students can use at home. So you've got a lot of good connection uh, with the community that you can um, decide if you want to have Anomales, Biografias, Ciencia, Estudios Sociales, and Salud, which would be health. So you've got all of those uh, original Pebble Go modules are, are in Spanish. And uh, Capstone is also looking at moving that up the ladder as well to the next level. Um, right now that's just English, but we're looking at some dual language possibilities. Um, so those are the three main metal packages. Bronze would be the original, the primary Pebble Go. Silver would add either Spanish or the Pebble Go Next, which would be all the three five content. And then gold would give you everything. So that's your kind of your all in package. Uh, if you've had platinum in the past before, it's really carrying through to gold. It's still the same renewal kind of process and you can work with wills on that um, as, you, as your renewal time comes up. If you want to make an upgrade, if you wanna make any changes, there's a lot of good new content to consider and uh, we can help you with that. Okay. So we've got two new copy links, or excuse me, two new spotlight features. First one's a copy link, and the second one I'll, I'll tell you in a minute. Uh, this copy link is really powerful because it is tied in with every single entry from Capstone. It really gives you a really nice way because they are the producer of the content, they have the copyright. So you have a little chain link that's next to an icon that's next to every single entry, every single ebook that you can use and just copy and then paste it into whatever tool you're using, whatever list, if you're working on Google Classroom for your, for your group, um, any environment. Once a student's already logged into Pebble Go from the single sign-on, they have full access to all of this content. So it's a really nice way to share out with staff, do grade level, um, book lists, anything you want to do with those copy links, you can do those. And that covers Pebble Go, Pebble Go Next, and your ebook collection. And the exciting, exciting part now is that the ebook collection now appears with Pebble Go. You don't have to go off to mycapstonelibrary.com anymore. It's all housed under Pebble Go. No extra sign in. It's all right there. Everything has the professional uh, read aloud audio and unlimited users. Any number of students and staff can access any book at any time. There's no holds, 
no waiting lists, unlimited users. If you have 100 second graders that want to read about the same topics, you're all good to go. Everybody can dive in and have full uh, universal access on all of your content. Uh, if you're looking for even more content, Capstone Connect is a great way to really expand on PebbleGo. And um, we can tell you more about that on a district basis, or if you want to work with Wills on that and um, have kind of a customized list that we can put together uh, for your district. Let us know what um, curriculum areas you're focusing on, and uh, this might help you expand PebbleGo into a deeper dive into more content. If you're doing a science adoption, a social studies adoption, any sort of uh, larger district initiative that would evolve around ebooks and uh, digital learning, remote learning, anything like that. We've got some really great possibilities here with Connect. And it's built right into the main architecture of Pebble Go. Just like the ebooks now is right in there. This is the purple drop down box. You see the top in Capstone. If you add Connect to your Pebble Go subscription, you automatically get this content search engine, which comes from Capstone. It's the purple drop down box. Um, this opens up, this launches the search engine, and there's just a lot of great, great new content here. You can search among 9,000 different Capstone resources through Capstone Connect. Um, the 750 per site adds on to your PebbleGo subscription. Again, ask Wills for a, a district quote on that if, um, if you have multiple sites, and you'll get a bundle, a, a starter bundle of Capstone eBooks that you own along with activity bundles and the opportunity to do all those searches around the standards and the topics and the units of study. So you've got a lot of great things here with Capstone Connect. And we also have Create, which we um, have um, the digital makerspace for your students. This adds on to your uh, Pebble Go uh, collection, uh, your subscription as well, and uh, really gives you a nice way for students to have a safe environment to create their own work based on capstone content. So here's the free demo. I'll pass this along for your use. And this is for any Wills member to use um, free through April 15th. And um, you can go on to pebblego.com, the login password, and also the create password. So you can look at thousands of different eBooks for free right now. You can check out PebbleGo Next if you don't have that yet. You can take a look at the Connect search engine. You can search through Wisconsin state standards and find some nice customized lists. There's all sorts of things you can, uh, you can dive in and, uh, and enjoy all of the great content from Capstone. Um, we have a lot of, of, of uh, libraries that have been taking advantage of our BOGO special. I'll just put that up there that we've uh, expanded that now. It's running in 2023 um, through July. So let us know if we can help you on that one. And all of the free resources, pebblego.com forward slash resources, all kinds of great things that you can access whenever you need to share out with staff and, and families, anything, anybody that wants to get a, a kind of a refresher and find out more about Pebble Go, this is a great way to go in there and it's all free. So there's my information and uh, we appreciate uh, Will's partnership. And uh, if you have any follow-up questions, we're happy to help you and uh, hope you have a, a great spring. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Marty. Thanks for sharing all that great information about Capstone. Um, certainly uh, one of the resources used by many, many K-12 members here uh, at Wills. So uh, it's always great to hear more about it and make sure that uh, everyone knows about it. Uh, I'll reiterate what Marty said. Please do reach out to us here at Wills or to Marty directly uh, for more information. And um, Marty will be sure to share those um, the, uh, the demo credentials out to our members as well. Great. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Uh, all right. So we're going to move right along to our next presenter. I can see uh, she's already ready to go. Um, I am joined here today from Infobase by Kim and Lisa. Uh, Kim and Lisa, are you ready to take over? Yep, I'm ready. Good. You can hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Okay, very good. I am ready. So yes, so uh, thank you, Wills and Wills members. Uh, this is exciting for me as this is my first Taco Tuesday, so I'm ready to go. Um, I'm Kim Kimichik, your business development uh, sales contact. I'm joined by my colleague, Lisa Hill. Uh, she's marketing manager, and she'll be spending a few minutes uh, a little bit later after my little thing here by sharing a bit about Credo Reference and information literacy resources. 
Uh, but first, a little bit about me, because I am new working to uh, in the state of uh, Wisconsin. I've been in the industry for over 20 years, working with academic libraries, understanding student research needs, understanding the role that faculty play in those research needs, and understanding the inner workings and goals of the campus library. What I love about InfoBase is our goal is to keep you, the libraries, dialed in with first and second year students. Uh, whether you're a community college, a technical college, or the traditional four-year academic institution, you'll see that InfoBase has been and continues to be uniquely positioned to work with your collection needs for those early researchers. InfoBase has had a long-standing partnership with Wills, and we don't take that partnership lightly. Uh, we value the relationship we have with each library and look forward to broadening that relationship and partnership with the libraries. Um, so um, even before the pandemic, there were challenges with libraries, many challenges for incoming students, the pressures of being a student, being overwhelmed by options, not knowing how to manage their time, and how to start a research paper, where to go for information, or how to evaluate those resources, and so on. Then the pandemic came and things just kind of blew up. Uh, so and it got much, much worse. Uh, faculty, too, they have challenges having more tasks and commitments being put on them in addition to their regular teaching and being mentors to students. Faculty had to learn how to teach remotely during the pandemic. Hybrid teaching and learning continues, and it will continue as many students prefer a hybrid model of on, within the campus itself. So with all that in mind, we have the four pillars. Uh, these pillars represent supporting first year and second year core classes that students take through their early coursework. Uh, the first one up is the information literacy. Here, students learn what academic research is, start with the basics of information literacy, and build those critical thinking skills. Then we have the e-reference, e the foundational uh, reference, focusing on the first steps in learning, how to do academic research, InfoBase provides premier reference content in any subject. Students will learn there is an alternative to Wikipedia resources with academic integrity. We've got to get them away from Wikipedia. Uh, the third pillar, the, instru the instructional pillar. Uh, here we focus on faculty, the instructors who are so pivotal in the student journey, how to integrate reference content, streaming video into student coursework, things like LibGuides, course outlines, et cetera. And then that fourth pillar is really supporting emerging programs uh, while continuing to foster the first and second year students in their research. Topics like allied health, nursing, language learning, and so on. At this point, students are feeling more comfortable and confident with their research skills and taking on more complex projects that involve research. And today, Lisa is going to feature our Credo reference and information literacy resources and how these resources offer the necessary tools for beginning researchers, uh, the very cornerstone to basic information literacy. So I'm now going to turn it over to my colleague, Lisa, and she will expand uh, on these, these, res these references. Lisa? Thank you so much, Kim. I, I switched the pillars around uh, just for today's demonstration. I'm going to be focusing on information literacy and foundational e-reference using the Credo brand resources. I'm going to start with foundational e-reference because the we have a, a large number of Wills subscribers to our Credo reference collections. Just want to make sure that you guys uh, know what we're up to um, and maybe show you some things maybe you weren't aware of. So Credo reference is foundational e-reference, an academic alternative to Wikipedia. We are an aggregator of full text encyclopedias, dictionaries, atlases, uh, reference from over 100 different publishers of academic reference from around the world. We offer full text as well as all images. We have well over 400,000 images that your students are welcome to use for research and educational purposes. Uh, foundational e-reference and information literacy tools kind of go hand in hand at the beginning of the research process. Students need to understand how to view information critically, right, to how to assess it, how to um, examine it for its veracity. But they also need foundational background information that's fact-based that they can trust. So for the beginning researchers who yet, don't yet have those information literacy and critical uh, skill building tools yet, um, we offer foundational reference on any subject imaginable for beginning research. Um, the best way to show Credo is to actually show Credo. So if you bear with me one moment, I'm going to share my uh, screen and get out of here. 
and give you a quick tour of this platform. And I'm going to sh resume sharing. This is Credo Reference. I just want to quickly show you why it's useful for beginning researchers. When you're searching in the Credo Reference search box, you're searching all of the titles that are part of your collection. I'm going to get into what that means in just a moment. Um, but when you run a search, you're searching all your 1,500 or 800 titles. And if you are a uh, library that has a robust discovery system, you probably have beginning researchers who are overwhelmed by that discovery. If you are a library that does not have an over uh, uh, robust discovery system, this can serve as a step into the discovery of other resources that your library subscribes to. So you get your background information, your basic info, who was Julius Caesar? Why do we know his name? And it's from a reputable publishing house that cannot be edited by any wiseacres. Uh, it's a great place to set your foundation for research. Then we give you kind of the first steps in resource evaluation, uh, a safe place of reference only, but taking a look at the different lenses through which you can look at our reference content. Uh, what is a subject encyclopedia versus um, you know, general reference or atlas or uh, just the basics of source evaluation over on the left, we're getting Julius Caesar content from across the different resources available. On the right, we have a mind map, which enables um, exploratory search. So if you don't know what to research, just click around in our mind map. We keep track of the different nodes that you have um, uh, clicked on already. And um, it kind of allows you to jump from node to node in the lily pad of research. Underneath the mind map, we get into our um, federated search. So this is what I'm talking about. If you don't have a robust discovery system, you get to choose which are the next step databases for your beginning researchers to step onto. And that we'll be linking to the library trusted endorsed uh, paid for content from the other uh, vendors that you might work with, whether it's EBSCO, Gale, ProQuest, uh, Infobase as well. Uh, with one click, you can seamlessly be moved into that other vendor's resource. For demo purposes, of course, I'm using Infobase, but you get the idea. Um, so that, in a nutshell, is Credo Reference. And let me just go back to my slide deck for a sec. And I want to talk about the publishing, uh, the collections that are available um, if you are a subscriber of ours, then you most likely fit in the two blo uh, blue boxes at the top of the screen. You have our core content. That's your general knowledge, general reference collection. Complete core is larger. It is never weeded unless a publisher asks us to remove content. Academic core is weeded yearly according to age of the content and overall usage of that title. Um, I want to talk a little bit about what's in the green boxes. We have add-on content, upwards of 4,000 additional titles that you can add to your Credo reference collection. There is zero overlap between the uh, blue boxes and the green boxes. The Credo Essentials collections are 28 collections, subject collections, and you can add to, again, that fourth pillar, support those flagship or emerging programs with additional reference content. It's seamlessly added into your Credo reference uh, collection. We also, also have uh, options for perpetual purchase, upwards of 4,000 titles. Again, no overlap with that core collection. You cannot perpetually purchase core titles. Uh, I'm highlighting our DEI collection, which brings together about 80 titles in kind of the ethnic studies and gender and women's studies areas of curation from our editorial team. And you can purchase this subscription, subscription or not subscription, you can purchase this list perpetually um, as, as a group or you can pick and choose individual titles. So that in a nutshell is Credo Reference. I want to, oops, I'm staying in the slideshow, touch lightly for a minute or two on the information literacy package that we have. We have two products and these are different than Credo Reference. This is not a database. This is essentially a courseware. It is a repository of upwards of 100 digital assets, all aligned to ACRL and AAC and U standards videos, quizzes, and tutorials. So if you take a look at this under evaluating information, we have videos, quizzes, and tutorials. You can send your students through this as a turnkey information literacy course, or you can pick and choose different modules, different tutorials, quizzes, or videos, and embed them at point of need. Your history teacher or faculty member who doesn't want to spend class time on teaching about plagiarism can flip the classroom, grab one of these little um, modules, and place it right into their learning management system course pack. 
tell them, watch this video before you come to class because you have to write a research paper and you need to know about the importance of citations and academic integrity. Uh, this is what our content looks like. It's entirely editable. Everything except for the physical video itself. All of our videos are ADA compliant. They have full transcripts, uh, captions in Spanish and English. And if, for the information literacy core collection, it is 100 uh, tutorials and videos. For health science, it's about 35. And this, again, is intended for beginning researchers, not necessarily first and second year students, but first and second year in the discipline of health sciences. So you can see it's exactly the same as Information Literacy Core. The content is a little bit different, and you can see that we're now looking through the lens of health science. So if you have any questions about our uh, Information Literacy Suite or the Credo Reference Collections, I'll hand off to Kim, my colleague, to finish up the discussion. There we go. So no, just uh, wanted to thank Wills for this opportunity today and um, thank the, the members that have joined us and those that are gonna watch this uh, as a recording. We do uh, have uh, trials on all of our products. Uh, please feel free to contact, reach out to me uh, with the uh, email um, and or there we go, thank you, Lisa. And a number which I can also be reached at. And then you may be hearing from me too, because I've actually been actively calling out to the libraries and reaching out since I do want to hopefully reach as many as I can and meet you virtually, if not uh, in person, since we won't be, but uh, definitely on the phone or virtually. And I look forward to meeting all of you. And thank you again, Wills. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you both, uh, Kim and Lisa, for joining us um, as uh, you mentioned, uh, Wills has a long time uh, relationship with InfoBase, so we're excited to uh, hear what's new and, and uh, bring these kind of deals to our members. Taking us to uh, our final presenter today, um, I'm excited to have uh, Elena Wayne here joining us from DocuSeek2. Do do Elena, are you here? I'm oh, right here. All right, Elena, are you ready to take over with Thank your speech you. here? Yes, I will. Thank you for having me. And um, hello to everybody out there and those that I have met in the past. I will take you on a brief tour of DocuSeq. I want to welcome everyone and get you a little bit up to date on what is new at DocuSeek. For those that aren't familiar with DocuSeek, DocuSeek is a streaming source that was put together with content from Bullfrog and Icarus to start. And now we have um, many, many partners, as you saw. We currently have um, over 2,100 titles and we hope to reach 2,400 titles by the end of December. We cover every key streaming feature that uh, libraries have come to depend on. We have single sign-on, LTI, closed captions, and um, mark records and all the discovery tools uh, and equip making, citation tools, and the ability for faculty to make playlists. Uh, I'll stop right here and say, we also have a K-12 package for DocuSeq with over I think we're at about 335 uh, specially selected titles, plus anything else in the DocuSeq catalog, of course, is available upon request. Mm -hmm. This is a, a look at DocuSeq, the uh, intro to DocuSeq. When you arrive on our page, we have a list of popular films. These are films in real time that are being used across the world, actually. So you can see what other campuses are focusing on. We cover every subject area, so we have something for everyone. 
And as I mentioned, we're in our third edition. And after December of 23, we'll introduce the fourth edition and probably bring another 600 titles on your campus. This is a teaser of some of those distributors that you saw in my intro. And there's more that haven't made this slide that have joined us since. We are so, it's so very excited. I, I mean, women make movies that are now part of DocuSeek. So if you do get our large collection, you get access to a, a huge amount of women make movies. Then you can also get women make movies non-exclusives now on DocuSeek. And I'm going to get more into that later. But we're very excited to have women make movies join us. Um, our DocuSeek collection of 2,400 titles are made up of exclusive titles. And for subscribers, we are now offering a bonus add-on at no additional charge of non-exclusive Women Make Movies content. We're also excited as part of the DocuSeek Complete Collection to have the films of Anand Ped Wardhan. He is an amazing documentary filmmaker, very well known in India, very controversial. This is the first time you could get all his content here in the States. As you see here, we have a couple other new special collections. We have the Icarus Films Fiction Collection. Uh, Icarus now has a collection of fiction films, some really incredible films from around the world that is now available. So especially if you have a campus that does film studies, we're excited to offer the Icarus Films Fiction Collection. And then we're very excited to have uh, an additional partner, Good Docs. And we now have the entire Good Docs catalog streaming on DocuSeek. As I mentioned, Good Docs is available as an independent collection uh, for one year and three year subscriptions. We are excited to say that we have 25 of these titles as part of the DocuSeek Complete Collection. Collective Eye has joined DocuSeek this year, and besides bringing exclusive content, we also have 51 titles from Collective Eye that are non-exclusive. So that's very exciting news because we are starting to be your one-stop shop for content. And I'm very excited to announce that Pragda, which is a amazing Spanish um, Latin American film company is now going to be um, housed on the DocuSeek platform as a separate collection entirely. So keep your eye out for word when um, we go live with Pragda on the DocuSeek platform. This is a sample of all our new releases. As you can see, we cover just about every topic under the sun. And if you're on our site, there is a page that will get you up to date on anything that has recently been uploaded sometimes even before MARC records are available. So you get a quick look at what's coming. Also, you can request this particular list of all the different options available via DocuSeek. We use um, token programs. If you just want to save some money and prepay in advance for content that you might purchase during the course of a year. And those are one year, three year and life of file licenses. So that's kind of exciting. You can, of course, uh, rent um, or have perpetual on any individual title license. Then we have the Good Docs. We also have the Global Environmental Justice Collection, which is a, a grant funded by the Luce Foundation. Very exciting collection. A good mini collection from somebody maybe just starting um, that has some of the more important titles in uh, global environmental justice. And then, of course, the Icarus Films Fiction Collection I mentioned, and then the DocuSeek Complete Third Edition. Now, our collection has a couple different ways to go. You can do a one-year EBA program or a three-year EBA program. We've moved over to the EBA model because after speaking to our librarians, we've discovered that people got tired of subscribing with nothing to show at the end of the subscription. So DocuSeek decided to put together an evidence-based program. 
And here you would get at the end of one year, 10 life of file selections. And the way it's priced, it's as if you're getting the whole collection for a minor service fee in order to pick 10 life of file licenses. So many of our libraries are using some one-time money in the subscription program. So it's very unique. Also, we have a three-year model and we've added a bonus 10 extra titles for life of file. So that is an amazing value and it would start you on a curation of the DocuSeq catalog. Um, this is just to let you know, we are available around the world. We also have the most amazing promotional material. Um, when you do set up a subscription, we offer you all kinds of uh, promotional flyers. We've got about 23 flyers. We personalize them. Uh, if you see down here where our logo is, we will put your logo down there and your URL. Um, these are great to put all over campus. We also have postcards and post pandemic, we found faculty appreciate getting a postcard in their faculty email, I mean, regular mailbox, because um, I think it's much more effective now instead of the mass amount of emails they received post pan, you know, pre pandemic. So I think that if you have faculty that need a little nudge, once you get a, a set of uh, content from DocuSeq, use these postcards and get their attention. We have beautiful bookmarks that you can use for new student week put out at the library. Uh, many have put it on their study tables for students to use and we've added a QR code because we know how uh, students have that phone in their hand 24 seven. It's another way to bring the students to the DocuSeq collection. Um, we have just amazing resource material. We do listen to what librarians are asking for. We also have shelf talkers and I have to put a thank you here to um, Sarah McCleskey at Hofstra University. She suggested I develop shelf talkers. And these are long cards that you can slide into your stacks, into the books by the subject categories to attract the attention of somebody seeking a book on a subject. Again, there's a QR code here, which makes it um, very easy for them to slide right into the DocuSeq catalog. Here is a picture from Sarah McCleskey to show how she uses these on her shelves. And, uh, and she's very pleased with the results. And at this point, I will say, we also have a search widget that is available to you if you do subscribe to the collection that you can put all over the place. And um, at this point, I wanna make one other recommendation. I still have a few minutes. Um, I have heard from librarians that they are using the course management system, whether it's Canvas or Moodle, et cetera, to advertise parts of their collection. And uh, if you get permission from the webmaster to put something on your announcement page to announce a new collection available, um, it is really the one place on your campus all students and all faculty go to every single day and you get their attention. So um, if you can buy a cup of coffee for your webmaster, you might be able to market some of your uh, collection on your course management system. And I'll leave you with this statement from Chris Lewis at American University. If you love documentaries, DocuSeq is an embarrassment of riches. There is simply no other documentary collection on par with DocuSeq. Thank you, Chris Lewis. And below you'll see our contact folk. Julie Wang not only does um, higher ed, she is your K-12 person. So those with interest in K-12, please reach out to Julie. And everyone else, please give me a call. And I want to send it back to you, Jeff, and thank everybody for coming. Thank you, Elena. It's always a pleasure to have you here. Um, and thanks to all of our presenters for joining us today. Um, I will uh, also say thank you to uh, anyone who uh, attended live and anyone who's watching the recording now after the fact. And remind you that we are meeting again two weeks from now for another Taco Tuesday <clears throat> um, on March 21st, uh, same, same place, uh, same time, two weeks from today. 
So thanks again to everyone, and I hope everyone has a great afternoon.